Hello and welcome to section 4, score-based algorithms, the likelihood score. We saw how to use a constraint-based approach to find a p-map from data. What about score-based approaches? There we search for the structure with the high score. But what are the common scores? Well, one is the likelihood score and it's defined as follows. The likelihood score of a DAG G is the log of the likelihood of when we use the MLE parameters for the DAG. So it's basically the log of the probability of the data conditioned on the maximum likelihood estimates of the parameters of that DAG. And this we have seen in the likelihood, the, the parameter learning. Just note that the log is often the base E. You can use any base as long as you're consistent among the scores. We often consider two as the base in our calculations. Okay, a recall, entropy and mutual information, consider random variables x and y. The entropy hpx is a measure of randomness and uncertainty in the values of x, and it's defined as minus the summation over x, the values of x, of p of x times log p of x. The higher the entropy, the more uncertain the outcome is. For example, a uniform distribution means that every value of x is possible with the same probability so we have no clue which one can happen this has a high entropy the mutual information ipxy x and y measures the dependency between x and y and it's defined as the summation of p of x and y times log of the joint distribution divided by the marginal distributions and this is over all possible values of x and y. Mutual information is non-negative, and a mutual information of 0 Im implies independence. You can see that then p of x, y will be p of x times p of y, so this one will be 1, log of 1 will be 0, and then the whole thing will be 0. Okay, so entropy, mutual information, here we have our proposition. The likelihood score decomposes as follows. Here I have the mutual information of each of the variables and its parents, the summation of all of them, and here minus the summation of all of the entropies. The whole thing is al also multiplied by n. Just note that here I have p hat, that is the empirical distribution. p hat of x is the frequency of x in, in the table. And here's the proof. From parameter learning, we know that the likelihood of a parameter theta is this multiplication. You see that the number of times that xi and parents of xi appears uh, here shows up as the power of theta. And from here, if I take the log, then all of these multiplications will, will turn into a summation. So you can see that y often log is used as the score function here and in the next sections. So n will appear as a coefficient and I will have the log of the parameter theta. Just note that here I'm using MLE, so MLE will also appear here. And for the rest of the proof, I'm focusing only on this second part, not uh, summation over n. This will be written in this way. So n, the number of times that xi and parents of xi appear, because we used uh, uh, the empirical distribution p hat, this is equal to exactly n times p hat of xi and parents of xi. If this wasn't the empirical distribution, these two wouldn't necessarily match. Okay. Now, the I just add, uh, uh, multiply p hat in the nominator and the denominator and I will take p hat of xi in the nominator here and the other one I will just take it out and get this other term. The first term is the mutual information, the, the second term is n, uh, so I'm marginalizing over parents of xi, so what will remain is just p hat of xi and you can see that this second term is just the negative of the entropy of xi. Okay, great, so we're done with the proof. Let's see it in, a practi in practice quickly. How to calculate the likelihood score of this structure, mask to COVID. 
it will be n times the mutual informations minus n times the entropies. For the mutual informations, I only have C and the parents, which is mask, because masks, uh, the, the parents of masks are empty, and the mutual information will be zero for that term. So first, let's see how to calculate the entropy of M using the formula. I'm just writing it here. Two cases for M, M equal to one, M equal to zero. Just note that here, the negative sign, I turn it into a, a reverse of the log, log, log function. So it should have been minus eight over 12, log of eight over 12 with a negative sign, but then I reversed it, 12 over eight. That's a property of the log. And the reason is that you may see this form also for mutual information. Doesn't matter. At the end, we will get this number as the final value. And we can also calculate the entropy of C, HP of C. Same story for C equal to one, C equal to zero. I do the math and this is what I will get. And we have uh, color coded the rows here. Okay, so what about the mutual information? IP of C and the parents of C, which is M. So I will have C and M. There are four possibilities. I need to consider all four of them. C equal to one, M equal to one times log of P of the joint, C, C1, M1, and in the denominator, it's each of them separately. Again, color coded, you can see that from here, we can easily get to the numbers here. And if you do the math, you will get 0 0.29. If I plug in the values, I will get this term, which is minus 18.6. And this is the likelihood score of this structure. Great. Now I want to interpret the likelihood score. I have written the formula here. Note that this last term, this has nothing to do with the structure. It's just the entropy of the variables. So when I'm comparing different structures, I can just ignore this, ter this term. Uh, same story with M. So I only need to focus on the mutual information. What is it calculating though? This is the strength of the dependence of Xi and its parents uh, in the distribution P. Now, Highest score networks encode greater parental dependencies, right? Because uh, th this term in those networks will be greater. But then we have this proposition that if you add some variable y to the parents, then the mutual in independence will not go down. And the interpretation is that xi and parents of xi had some mutual independence they had some dependency here i just added another variable y uh, it can only do better it can only increase the dependency of xi to this new set okay so adding another parent almost always increases the mutual information between the variables and its parents uh, it will never decrease what we mean here is that it will strictly, almost always strictly increase. The exception is where there is an exact conditional independence in the empirical distribution. Then we will say that, well, now we added y, but it just kept it as equal. It didn't increase. But this is unlikely due to the noise and other emp empirical considerations. This means that the likelihood score is maximized for a completely connected network. So if you just use that, you don't need to search over any of the uh, uh, graphs. You can just use this one as your final result. Let's look at it in a different way. If the variable order x1 to xn is consistent with the edges in G, then I will have the likelihood score in this way. And by being consistent with the edges, it means that the parents of xi are only the preceding ones, x1 to xi minus 1. The first term is the joint entropy term. So you see here, it's the opposite of the last time. Here, the entropy appears with a positive sign, and the mutual information is with a negative sign. The entropy term, again, does not depend on the structure. What is the second term? This time, this mutual information is interpreting the information between xi and the preceding variables in the order given xi's parents. 
So it's kind of capturing the dependence with the non-parental nodes. The more independent Xi to its non-parental preceding nodes, the higher the score of the network. And this means that if we condition Xi on its parents, then ideally we would like it it, it, we would like it to be completely independent of all the preceding nodes. And this is suggesting that, well, we should just make all of x1 to xi minus 1 as the parents of xi, because then there's nothing to be independent from. And uh, th this is a condition that will be surely satisfied in any data set. So again, it's leading us to a completely connected network. And this results in a model that overfits the training data. If we write down the joint probability distribution, we see that it's basically what the chain rule provides. There is no conditional independence that would simplify the joint distribution. And this model, as a result, may not generalize well to new data sets. Unless we tackle this overfitting by some techniques, this is a shortcoming of using the likelihood score. Okay, to summarize, one of the scores is the likelihood score, and this will result in a completely connected network to have the highest score.